at this time in your life, kids. Because this is the time in your life when you still have your choices. And it goes by so fast. When you're a teenager, you think you can do anything, and you do. Your 20s are a blur. 30s, you raise your family, you make a little money, and you think to yourself, what happened to my 20s? 40s, you grow a little pot belly, you grow another chin. The music starts to get too loud. One of your old girlfriends from high school becomes a grandmother. 50s, you have a minor surgery. You'll call it a procedure, but it's a surgery. 60s, you'll have a major surgery. The music is still loud, but it doesn't matter because you can't hear it anyway. 70s, you and the wife retired to Fort Lauderdale. Start eating dinner at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. You have lunch around 10, breakfast the night before. Spend most of your time wandering around malls looking for the ultimate soft yogurt and muttering, how come the kids don't call? How come the kids don't call? The 80s, you'll have a major stroke. You end up babbling with some Jamaican nurse who your wife can't stand, but who you call mama. Any questions? Your few freedoms are preserved because they are profitable to your owners. The great challenge of the democratic model is that increases in wealth and freedom threaten the farmers. The ruling classes initially profit from a relatively free market in capital and labor, but as their livestock become more used to their freedoms and growing wealth, they begin to question why they need rulers at all. Ah well, nobody ever said that human farming was easy. Keeping the tax livestock securely in the compounds of the ruling classes is a three-phase process. The first is to indoctrinate the young through government, quote, education. As the wealth of democratic countries grew, government schools were universally inflicted in order to control the thoughts and souls of the livestock. The second phase is to turn citizens against each other through the creation of dependent livestock. It is very difficult to rule human beings directly through force, and where it can be achieved, it remains cripplingly underproductive, as can be seen in North Korea. Human beings do not breed well or produce efficiently in direct captivity. Ah, but if human beings believe that they are free, then they will produce much more for their farmers. The best way to maintain this illusion of freedom is to put some of the livestock on the payroll of the farmer. Those cows that become dependent on the existing hierarchy will then attack any other cows who point out the violence, hypocrisy, and immorality of human ownership. Officers positioned Grant face first on the floor with one officer near his head, a second near his back, and a third officer standing nearby. There appeared to be a brief struggle. Then, a two-year veteran BART officer stands, draws his weapon, and fires. Freedom is slavery, and slavery is freedom. If you can get the cows to attack each other, whenever anybody brings up the reality of their situation, then you don't have to spend nearly as much controlling them directly. Those cows who become dependent upon the stolen largesse of the farmer will violently oppose any questioning of the virtue of human ownership, and the intellectual and artistic classes, always and forever dependent upon the farmers, will say to anyone who demands freedom from ownership, you will harm your fellow cows. The livestock are thus kept enclosed by shifting the moral responsibility for the destructiveness of a violent system to those who demand real freedom. The third phase is to invent continual external threats so that the frightened livestock cling to the protection of the farmers. This system of human farming is now nearing its end. The terrible tragedies of modern Western economic systems has occurred not in spite of, but because of, past economic freedoms. The massive increases in Western wealth throughout the 19th century resulted from economic freedoms. And it was this very increase in wealth that fed the size and power of the state. Whenever the livestock become exponentially more productive, you get a corresponding increase in the number of farmers and their dependents. 
the growth of the state is always proportional to the preceding economic freedoms. Economic freedoms create wealth, and the wealth attracts more thieves and political parasites, whose greed then destroys the economic freedoms. In other words, freedom metastasizes the cancer of the state. The government that starts off the smallest will always end up the largest. This is why there can be no viable and sustainable alternative to a truly free and peaceful society. A society without political rulers, without human ownership, without the violence of taxation and statism. To be truly free is both very easy and very hard. We avoid the horror of our enslavement because it is so painful to see it directly. We dance around the endless violence of our dying system because we fear the attacks of our fellow livestock. But we can only be kept in the cages we refuse to see. Wake up. To see the farm is to leave it.